Hey guys, it's Jamie bringing you a special episode of Recovery Inspired Hope. And we have special news today. So excited. We're talking about Addiction Recovery Awareness Day 2021. We have got Jeff Breedlove here who's going to give us all the details so we can get connected and we can come and support and make our voices heard for this amazing event. Jeff? Jamie, thanks. And thanks for having uh, me on to represent the ARAD Advisory Committee. It's a, first of all, ARAD Addiction Recovery Awareness Day. When I say the ARAD, that's what that means. Uh, and this is the 12th annual event. So it's been going on for over a decade and it's run by a coalition of organizations that support um, peer led recovery uh, in Georgia. Um, wonderful group of, of coalitions, uh, uh, partners, and the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse is privileged to sort of be their, um, their point. And we sort of run ARAD for this broad coalition. But I want to start by saying this is a true team effort by a bunch of organizations that do this. And it's wonderful. Now, this year will be um, very different because we will be 100% virtual because of COVID. So the bad news is we won't be in person. Where last year, last year in person, we had over 1,300 people. Oh, yeah, I was there. It was amazing. Right. It was amazing. The good news is this leadership team, they were determined to send a message that recovery is stronger than COVID. And to be honest, we didn't know what to do. I mean, we didn't know. How would we prove that point? How would we say COVID can't stop recovery? Um, and it has led to a truly different, truly different ARAD this year. So what we're going to do is we will start at, uh, well, you can start coming on at 9 a.m. People can come on at 9, and we'll talk about how you come on in a minute. But they can come on Zoom at 9, and there'll be some videos and some special guests live that will be on Zoom from the Capitol, from, from all kinds of special guest speakers uh, from 9 to 10. And then the program will really kick off at 10 with the official welcome. Um, and then at 10.15, we'll have the Attorney General of Georgia, Chris Carr, who's a strong supporter of recovery. At 10.30, the, the big keynote speaker will be Governor Brian Kemp, who for the second year in a row is um, sending a message that his administration supports peer-led recovery by being the keynote speaker. Um, and then it will go through our, our morning session with um, Neil Campbell and George Brock, uh, talking about some recovery um, training and advocacy and messaging. I'll do a section on um, on advocacy and um, we will have um, Georgia Overdose Prevention doing the Narcan. We will have, uh, we're planning an update on COVID and recovery. Uh, we'll have a highlight with the uh, impact of COVID and the success of the virtual all recovery meetings and the CARES warm line. And when people hear that point right there, I want to say this, the number of, of interactions that have happened on the CARES warm line and with the virtual all recovery meetings during COVID is historic. And that's going to be just, it'll blow your mind when, when uh, Larissa and Beverly talk about that. So that, and, and that'll kind of be the morning session. And then um, at 1230 to one o'clock, we'll have some more very special guests that will be zooming in for five minutes each you won't want to miss these guests and then we will go into something totally new for us never before done and these are breakout sessions and and what we came up with and it, it took a, a great leadership team of um, william carnes and brian kite and and sierra carnes and, and, and tiana garcia they really are the ones that produce um uh, COVID-19. It's their fault. <laughs> COVID-19 is their fault. No, they're the ones that produce ARAD. And I want to give a big shout out because these, these people are working above and beyond virtually 12, 14 hour days right now to get ready for it. But um, they're going to have these breakout sessions and they'll go from um, one o'clock to seven o'clock. It's six hours and there'll be two per hour. 
So there's a total of 12 breakout sessions, Jamie. And it's brand new for us. Yeah, I saw, um, and you know, you're talking about Brian. Brian just celebrated, right? Six years. Six years. Happy birthday, Brian Kite. <laughs> right. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about the breakout sessions. But, you know, what I want, I want to ask you is, um, you know, some people might feel like a little discouraged, like, well, what's the point if I go this year? It's just online. And how are they even going to know? And, you know, maybe I don't feel like I'm really contributing or participating or being a part of because it's online. Why is it so important this year, especially for this event, for us to show up? Oh, thank you, Jamie. That is the question of the day. So this, at the end of the day, is an advocacy event to support funding in the state budget for programs that support recovery, peer-led recovery in particular. Now, I assure you of this, the governor, the members of the General Assembly, they now are very accustomed to Zoom gatherings like this from other organizations. And what they need to know is that people support this issue. So they will be on this call. Their staff will be on this call. Reporters will be on this call. And they're looking for one thing at the end of the day, the number of people on the call. So when this number is a small number, they'll say, maybe not so many people support recovery. Maybe we don't so much need to fund these programs. When they see a big number, they absolutely positively won't want to cut the budget. So they're despite, they're debating the budget today. As we tape this, they've started, and they're going to pass the supplemental budget. I don't want to get too technical, but every year we pass two budgets. Supplemental to kind of tidy up last year's budget and the big budget for the coming year. Well, we have friends and allies in the General Assembly who are fighting to make sure that in the middle of COVID, our, our funding doesn't get cut. We didn't get cut last year because but we showed up. Because we showed up, right. Because showed last up. year right. it was, you know, we were nothing short of terrified. You know, they were right. trying to cut our budget and we came up, we made our voices heard and we made them stronger than ever. And for this event, we need to do the same thing. We need to come exactly up and we need right. to be strong and be present and, and, and show that we are here and we are the faces and voices of recovery. And that, you know, there's no way that they're going to do even think about cutting our budget because we have so many of us, a whole army. Right. So here's the thing. It's free. You don't have to leave your home or wherever you are. I mean, you don't have to travel to Atlanta. <laughs> it actually couldn't be more convenient. You just have to click the link and we'll talk about that and, and log in. And even if you can't devote like 100% of your moment to the screen, have it on in the background while you work. You know, have it on your phone if you're working on your computer. Have it on your computer if you're working on your phone. But have it on because every number makes the community bigger. And we must, must have a big number because that's the bottom line. They will look and they will say that they had less than 1,300 so it's going down or they'll say, Hey, they had more than 1300 and they're really organizing. So, you know, we've got to have a big number. It's that important because when you show up, you empower our friends in the general assembly to make certain that when they're meeting and to talk about the budget and what's called the appropriations committee, that's what it's called, that they can say with the conviction that the other people believe, you don't want to cut those people in recovery because you know what? They're organized and they vote. Right. Yes. And so this is what we're fighting for. So it couldn't be simpler. And I will tell you this too. We'll say this maybe one or two times, but it's very simple to register. Maybe at this point, Jamie, people are saying, well, how do I register? Right. All you got to do is go to the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse website, GA, substanceabuse.org. I'll make Jamie. sure I put a link up for that. Jamie, thank you, Jamie. Go there. There's a landing page. It pops right up. Click on the landing page. It's a very, very simple name, address. You don't have to put your phone number. 
name, address, city, uh, boom, you're, you're registered. Um, you can pick these um, breakout sessions. Oh, tell um, us about the breakout sessions. I'm really excited about these. Yeah, me too. So listen, we're going to have 12 breakout sessions and there's two an hour. Um, so they're an hour each. And there's going to be one like art and recovery. And that one's a little different because our, our friends, our colleagues at, at Rise uh, RCO in downtown Atlanta will be doing different kinds of performance art during that hour. Uh, Neil Campbell is going to do film and recovery with our ally, Cassandra Price, who actually is one of the leaders at DBHDD. So they're going to do a whole retrospective on how recovery has been uh, demonstrated, shown in film. We have a really cool one called Pets in Recovery. There's a whole movement out there about how pets help people in recovery. And we've got a very special program on that. We got yoga and recovery. Um, we've got community and recovery, how recovery helps local communities, uh, families and recovery, which is a very popular one so far in signups. And we will have, these aren't people in recovery. These are family members who have had people in recovery or lost someone to our disease. So be a very, very good one. Uh, we have food and recovery. Um, turns out we have a number of professional chefs who are in recovery. And Aww. they're getting together to talk about how food is therapeutic and how, it, it, I don't know, they're going to do a fun thing. How eating healthy is good and how they, they yeah. love to cook for their recovery. And mm -hmm. uh, had it been in person, I would have insisted that I get free samples, but I guess I have next year. Um, we're going to have mental health, uh, dual diagnosis session in recovery. A lot of good, good leaders there. Uh, from the mental health partnership will be talking. Women in recovery. It's going to be a great session. Um, I think Shonda Santana from Athens, where you're based out of, is going to be part of that. Um, faith and recovery, a good, good session. We will have uh, a diversity of faiths represented. So it's, it's, it's going to be Christian, Jewish, Muslim perspectives, some, some great faith leaders there. Um, actually, I want to give a rare shout out uh, to um, Mayor Tom, Randy Toms, Mayor Toms, Warner Robins, Georgia. He's the mayor of that city. He's also a pastor and he's a person in long-term recovery. So this is a man who, who uh, has our disease, who became a pastor and then became a mayor. He'll be on there. It's really, really wonderful. Um, youth in recovery. And we have a great panel of young people to talk about that. And last, but certainly not least, uh, the 12th one is active lifestyle in recovery. So there's yoga, which I guess is active. But beyond yoga, what are other activities that people do? And we have Delane Ross from with our friends from the Phoenix.org. And Delane's going to talk about how a lot of people like to use uh, physical activities in, in their recovery. So we tried to be very inclusive, very diverse. Yes. There's something there for everybody, I think. Absolutely. I can. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would like to go to all of them. <laughs> and that's a good point, Jamie. Technically, you can. I mean, <laughs> what we mean is, Neil says it's like going to the mall. She, you can sign up for as many as you want. They're all free. There's no limit. And you can pop in and pop out. So maybe you, you know, maybe there's two at the same time and you really want to see both. Well, sign up for both. And on your own, pop in, pop out. It's, awesome. it's all for you. It's all for the people. It's all for the attendees. So technically, there's no limit on how many you can sign up. Now, practically, you're probably going to get engaged and you know get engaged in one. But do your thing. Go where you need to go. Go where you want to go and enjoy it the way that it will help your recovery. But um, these are a blessing. So that's brand new. We've never done these. And then I will say this. At the end of the day, the very last thing we're going to do at 7 o'clock, we, we do these every day anyway. We do these virtual all recovery meetings every day, twice a day, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we promote those on our social media. And I should say, just to digress, Jamie, if you ever need a meeting during COVID, we do them twice a day in English. We do them once a week in Spanish. We have one a week uh, on Thursdays at noon for the LGBTQ community. They're always free, always um, safe places. But we're doing one at seven o'clock the night of ARAD hosted by Neil Campbell. I'll be there to, to sort of help her, but she's uh, of course our real leader. But Neil and I will be 
bringing that virtual all recovery meeting. And we hope that anybody and everybody uh, will, will round the day off by coming to that. So it's a full day. Yeah, I mean, and you know, now that you know you're explaining the layout and all the things involved this is actually a lot more exciting than the in-person one because there's no way that we could do all of these awesome things and all of these amazing events in person well you're right jamie we've talked about that as a, a both a staff and as an arad leadership team and certainly no formal announcements and by the way i got a cool banner behind me here with you know some of the logos uh this came yesterday, but there's certainly, this is not a formal announcement, but I can say that we have discussed how moving forward in 2022, do we incorporate these exciting new things with still being in person? And I don't have all the answers today and the committee doesn't have and the staff and team, we don't have all the answers, but the answer will come to us. But I can tell you, we have made the decision that we're gonna find the details where we still meet in person, but then maybe do some of this stuff virtually. So it's just been a, an opportunity. What, what was a challenge, what was a, a, a disappointing, sad time to be you know, transparent about it. We have feelings, you know, we were very sad. Um, now we're all excited and we're like, hey, this can be better. Neil was saying the other day, this is almost like a full day conference. And what, what may happen is really great. It may be where moving forward on ARAD, we have a hybrid day, an in-person session, but then things that people can participate in virtually, or it may become a, a two-day thing where because because people travel, you know, and, and we want them to be safe and we want people to come in person, uh, we may do the in-person thing and then have another day with some sessions and stuff where you know, people can safely be where they are and we do an interactive virtual thing. Again, details to come, but you're right, Jamie, it's going to forever change ARAD. It's going to make it better. And that's, that's, that's the way it should be. And with the great team that you have behind you, um, the great team at Georgia Council and all the developers of this, I, I don't foresee it, you know, I just foresee it getting better and better. So Absolutely. It is, it is. And so again, you know, let's say it a couple of times before our time ends. Our website, gasubstanceabuse.org. Go there, hit the landing page, sign up. It is also on the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse social media platforms. I mean, I can't tell you how it's on there. It's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And our, our partners are putting it links up. You know, all the RCOs, and boy, I love our RCOs. You've got a couple of great ones there in Athens. We got over 30 of them around the state. They're having a meeting later today for a new one to get organized in, in, a, in a county in South Georgia. There's more coming. And this RCO movement is, is extraordinary across the state. RCOs, in my personal opinion, are the backbone of peer-led recovery. And um, I want you to support on social media all the RCOs in Georgia, if there's an RCO that has a social media platform, especially Facebook and Twitter, please like it, please follow it, and please interact with them to show support for them. Um, but we'll be, um, they're posting, so it's it's not that hard to find the link to join, but certainly go to our website, gasubstanceabuse.org, and- um, And is that up. where you sign out for the breakout sessions as well? Correct. Correct. You do the, the only sort of thing is you have to sign up technically uh, for the big morning session. And then you have to kind of sign up, which really means pick the sessions you want to in the afternoon, just so they can manage technically on the back end some some IT stuff that really I don't understand. But uh, <laughs> smart people, smart people know that stuff. It's nothing. It's nothing nefarious. It's we're not trying to get your phone number. You just got to help us so that we can pull this off. And it'll be great. It's a it's a exciting day. We have Commissioner Judy Fitzgerald, who, of course, is the commissioner of DBHDD and, and Commissioner Fitzgerald and her leadership team are such strong public supporters of peer led recovery. It's commissioner 
Miss Gerald, who, you know, it's her budget. I mean, she fought for it in the budget last year. We want to give a huge thank you to her. She, she and her team, uh, it's not just her. She had a great leadership team at DBHCD. They are there for us. We need to be there for her. We got to show up for her so she can go tell the budget people. Governor Kemp is showing up for us. And he's telling people in government, I believe in peer-led recovery. I'm the head of the state government. You be there for them. The attorney general who's fighting in Washington for settlement money with opioid settlement money to get Georgia our fair share. He's showing up for us. We have Democrat and Republican members of the Working Group on Addiction and Recovery who will be showing up. And they go in that Capitol every day during COVID. I mean, think about that. I want to make that point, Jamie. We're not doing this in person at the Capitol because of COVID. But we ask members of the General Assembly, Democrat and Republican, please go in that building during COVID and get us money. Get us money. The least that we can do is show up on, 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 um, on Zoom and say, we're with you. Thank you. And you're not wasting your time. Absolutely. It's bipartisan. It's important. And those members that are showing up to fight for us, many of them are popping on to, to be a part of this. Most will speak. Maybe some won't have time to speak, but they're popping on. Y'all, they're looking to see if we're back, if we got their back. I mean, it's just that simple. Do we have their back or not? And the way you have their back, you log into ARAD, you learn, you share, you participate, and you make, uh, you send a message. And you know what Neil Campbell says, nothing about us without us. GASubstanceabuse.org. It's free. It's fast. It's simple. And are you guys still giving away the free t-shirts? The t-shirt contest is still on. Uh, it's actually it's actually pinned at the top of our Facebook page. And again, I'm you know I'm good on the front end, but the technical folks on the back end. Here's what they told me: You got to go to our Facebook page, and you have to use that post, and you tag three people in the post and, and uh, sign up yourself. And when you do that, that makes you eligible to win the free t-shirt. It's a really cool shirt. Um, there's also other posts on how you can order shirts. These are donations. There's no money that the council makes. There's no money that any of the organization makes. All the money goes into funding ARAD. And even though it's virtual, um, there's still cost involved. We had to buy a bigger platform on, on Zoom and other, other things that, that they have to do. But I'm just trying to say, we're not trying to make any money. It's not like we're trying to make money. So yeah, you can win a free t-shirt and you can you can support ARAD by buying a short sleeve shirt for 15, a long sleeve shirt for 20. Everybody has to buy them unless you win that one. <laughs> or we may do another one, you never know. But um, I bought some, uh, mine have not arrived. I'm, I'm, I checked the mailbox yesterday. I'm told they'll get here. Uh, soon, we want to thank our our, our vendor that's um, that's doing that for us. Um, so yeah, get an ARAD T-shirt. It'll be a historic one. It'll be the one that 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 was during COVID, and um, you'll wear it with pride. And uh, yeah, and Jamie, I hope you've entered, and uh, and maybe you'll win. Yeah, I shared it in some of my recovery groups. You know, there's so many recovery groups, and this I really took the opportunity of you know, sharing the stuff about ARAD to my recovery groups who are all over the world, you know, because during this, um, this time, you know, I've, I've met people in recovery from everywhere, from all different states, from all different countries, because there's, and there's also, you know, different countries that are still like totally locked down in quarantine. So imagine how awesome it would be for all of them to come too. So I know for all of my recovery friends out here that you have a ton of of um different recovery groups that you're involved in and you need to make sure you're out there and inviting them and just inviting everybody so that they can see how, truly how georgia recovers jamie thank you for saying that that is such a good point uh, you know our virtual all recovery meetings there's people from all over the country that come on right some of them quite regularly there's a group in boston uh that, that comes on as a recovery uh treatment center regularly 
this is Georgia. And Neil Campbell, for those of you who might see this outside of Georgia, Neil Campbell is our executive director. She is truly a national recovery leader. Georgia is blessed to have her in our state. But it's not limited to people from Georgia for ARAP. I mean, you can be from anywhere in the world, Jamie. Thank you for saying that. I mean, we don't care if you're a brother or sister in recovery. If you're an ally in recovery and you want to say, what are those folks in Georgia doing? And, and you know, let me check this out and show some support. Maybe learn something. Maybe show some love. Maybe teach them something. Whatever. Get on this ARAP. Uh, it, it truly would be a blessing to see people log in and put in the chat box, hey, I'm from you know, England, or, or I'm from California, or I'm from wherever, you know, I mean, we we welcome our international and national brothers and sisters, we welcome our friends and allies and family members from around the world to be a part of ARAD 2021. But we especially welcome our brothers and sisters and friends and allies across the state of Georgia. It really is. Folks don't know this, Jamie, or well, I guess, I shouldn't say that. But most people don't think about this all the time. But Jane, uh, Georgia is the biggest state land-wise east of the Mississippi River. It's a big place. And it takes quite a while to get from, say, South Georgia, some parts of South Georgia. The, the county furthest away from the state capital is Camden County. That's that county right above Jacksonville, Florida. And that's the furthest point away from the capital. So sometimes people just can't. They just can't come up to Atlanta for ARAD. Right. So, hey, zoom in this year. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm looking for people. I'm looking for some people to say in the chat box, I've never had a chance to drive to Atlanta for ARAD, but I'm down in um, I'm down in, 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 in St. Mary's, Georgia, and and now we're watching ARAD. You know, I'm down in Thomasville. I'm, I'm down in um, uh, Waycross. You know, I'm, I'm up in, in Dalton. I'm, I'm over in um, Clayton, up in Rabin County. These are the corners of Georgia, you know, I, I, and, and everywhere in between. We want people from all over the state, all over the nation, all over the world to be a part of this. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. So, um, gasubstanceabuse.org. Yes? gasubstanceabuse.org. Go to the landing page, sign up, and make your recovery voice heard. Awesome. Thanks so much. We will see you guys on February 2nd. Yes. February 2nd. Um, I want to thank Jamie uh, for doing this for the Georgia Recovery Community, for the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse and the ARAD team. But Jamie, you know, I'm just going to make sure I say it because I always say it, y'all. The, the real reason this is important is we're going to show and prove that recovery is real. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Jeff. Well, we'll see you guys on February 2nd. Make sure you sign up. I will make sure I put links in um, so you can make sure you sign up and make sure you like Georgia Council on Substance Abuse on Facebook and make sure you're out there supporting your local RCOs. And we will see you next time on Recovery Inspired Hope.